Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and you're very welcome to the first garden visit of a very long time. Not my garden, another garden and that's because of lockdown and quarantine and all that kind of thing. And I have something sumptuous for you today. We are today in Lismore Castle Gardens in County Waterford and I am completely blown away with how fantastic this garden is. It's just incredible to me that such a garden existed in Ireland and it hadn't been brought to my attention because it's just amazing. We have every kind of gardening here. I'm here among scented flocks, which is magnificent. We have wildflower meadows. We have tropical planting and buckets of salvias and aeoniums and all to the backdrop of the amazing castle. So tighten your seat belts and here we go. Let's visit Lismore Castle Gardens. Today we are visiting Lismore Castle Gardens. These gardens are said to be the oldest continually cultivated gardens in Ireland and they offer spectacular views of both Lismore Castle and the surrounding countryside. We're going to wander in the historic gardens which contain fine collections of magnolias, camellias, rhododendrons and herbaceous borders. As it's July, the herbaceous borders are the ones to notice. The castle itself was originally built in 1185 by King John of England. Later, the castle was owned by Sir Walter Raleigh and Richard Boyle. Although the planting has changed in taste over the years and with the various owners, the walls and terraces of the upper garden, where we are now, remain exactly the same as when commissioned by Richard Boyle, the first Earl of Cork, around 1605. We're now passing into a section of the upper garden where herbs and more exotic planting predominate. Here we have Roldana mixed with salvias and plectranthus and leading on to purple sage. And who can miss that pergola draped with grape vines? See how the garden leads into different garden rooms. Here the atmosphere is very green and calm and cool. There's a vegetable garden to die for just in terms of the quality of the vegetables grown and the breadth of what's on offer. But my heart, it goes completely out to this theatre of sweet pea. 
I've never seen sweet pea grown so beautifully and to such a large scale. They're interspersed with straw flowers and snapdragons and this display is a complete delight for the senses. But now let's head on over to this antique greenhouse. Unfortunately we can't go in but we can see that it's still in productive use. It's used for vegetables and there are seedlings starting off in there too. And in this sheltered spot there are aloes, there are echeverias, there's sulmesia, all of which thrive in this sheltered, well-drained area. This plant here that looks like a thistle is from South Africa and it's called Berkia. The flowers are absolutely amazing, but I'm not sure I could tolerate the foliage in my garden. Let's explore a little further and head down here. Now we are entering a fairy tale world of colourful annuals and soft, frothy umbilifers. Any flower that presents its flowers as a mass of small little ones all grouped together in kind of a half ball like these ones here. They're called umbilifers. And this absolute joy is Ami, a fantastic annual that gives all of the lacy exuberance of Queen Anne's lace, which we see in the hedgerows in May. But this plant, Ami, is more refined, more delicate, and being an annual, flowers all summer long. I'll definitely be growing this at Dwensa next summer. The wildflower meadow is of course joyous. There's something about a stretch or a field of wildflowers, a riot of colour dancing in the breeze, something that unlocks the inner child in us all. I challenge anyone to look at a wildflower meadow in full bloom and not smile.
Now we're heading over to that white tent in the distance for some light refreshments, even though the queue is very long. A glance at some old-fashioned haystacks, although they may be stylized rather than old-fashioned. And on to the hydrangea and phlox walk. This border relies heavily on white hydrangeas and specifically the macrophylla one called Annabelle. See what enormous puffballs of perfection this bush provides. Up the steps we go and now we can revel in the heady scent of so much pink phlox. An old fashioned favourite, but one that's making a comeback. And before we leave the upper garden, we can't go without checking out these giant echiums. A real marvel to behold. Now the mood changes as we move to the more relaxed lower part of the garden. This is the yew tree walk where Edmund Spencer is said to have written the Fairy Queen around 1590. He presented his book to Elizabeth I in 1589, probably sponsored by Sir Walter Raleigh, who was of course owner of Lismore Castle. And that brings me to the end of my visit to Lismore Castle Gardens, which I really, really enjoyed. So if ever you're in the neighborhood, I highly recommend that you come along and visit this fantastic garden too. Okay, see you on the next video. Bye.